Oh boy, oh boy, here we go again. Back to work tonight. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you rested up. We got a busy week ahead of us here. Got some great trades setting up for Tuesday's trading session. It is Monday evening. It's the 24th day of January 2022. As always, my name is Joseph and welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're watching for the first time tonight, it is great to have you with me. My job tonight is to help us fund the best trades setting up for Tuesday's trading session. It's not going to be hard either. We've got a lot of great trades setting up for Tuesday's trading session session had some huge moves on the charts today so anytime we see big moves today maybe some ranges some nice pullbacks maybe some reversals for tomorrow there will be no shortage of reliable setups in Tuesday's trading session uh, by the end of this video I'll go over all my favorite trades for tomorrow we'll also talk about some stuff to avoid right some traps to avoid to keep yourself out of trouble just in case you're trading on your own out there on Tuesday now of course as always before we jump into the video a lot to cover here tonight. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I, I, I publish this video, my best trade ideas, every evening on this YouTube video. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure you subscribe. Hit that little bell icon, because all this stuff is very time sensitive. I don't want you to miss the next one. Hit that little bell icon when you subscribe. If you guys have any questions for me, drop those questions in the comments section. Don't be bashful. I would love to answer any questions that you might have along the way. And if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoy making it, do me a favor hit that like button for me hit that thumbs up on the YouTube video appreciate you guys tuning in tonight after a boy what a busy weekend it was right busy weekend for sports busy first day of the week let's get ready for Tuesday though let's jump right in here getting ready for Tuesday's trading session got a lot to, got a lot to look forward to tomorrow right got some big news we got some big moves and I'm excited for Tuesday you should be as well now it definitely looked like the Fed might have got involved here this afternoon this this might have been a little plunge protection in, involved here but you know in case you missed today right big move down until this afternoon the market rips and runs higher here the, the S&P and the Nasdaq are obviously very very bullish right now uh, you know real, real strong bull moves like this always tell us to be looking for another leg in the same direction but obviously considering the situation we saw earlier this morning it would be foolish not to be prepared for if that if that pullback turns into to just a complete reversal and a move down. So obviously we have some pullback entries we're looking for here, but I'd be lying to you if, if, I, if, I, if, if I told you I, I didn't think this thing had a chance to roll over here. Uh, we'll talk more about this stuff as we go deeper into this video here. So definitely want to buy some pullbacks on the E-minis, the NASDAQ and the S&P, but I've got, a, I've got, a, I got two, I, I have two really important kind of scenarios that you want to, that you want to keep in mind here for the NASDAQ and the S&P to, to short these markets uh, for tomorrow. In fact, actually three maybe. We'll, we'll talk about a bonus uh, as well. Over on the oil, oil you can see is, is definitely bullish right now. We recently broke through a pendulum swing, broken pendulum, broken range, right? We know that from last week. Uh, we were definitely bullish right now. We get a lot of reasons to want to get long on the, on, on the crude oil. Uh, the next couple hours are really going to kind of tell us exactly where. So I've got probably maybe four different scenarios to be prepared for if we go higher and I've got a couple key shorts I'm watching as well not going to be easy to sell this market short just yet so I'm going to talk about kind of what to look for to know when this market is ready for potentially another another leg lower here again it's it's difficult to trust these these bull markets right now so we're gonna we're gonna put our plan together so we can make some money on Tuesday's trading session speaking of Tuesday though before we jump into the video before, the, before we get in the charts here let's talk about Tuesday there isn't any major news that we need to worry about for tomorrow. We've got the consumer confidence number at 10 o'clock. I don't anticipate that to be the really anything at all. If, if, if anything, tomorrow, the big news tomorrow, we've got some Microsoft earnings tomorrow afternoon after the close, right? So it's probably not going to affect us too badly. Definitely not tomorrow morning, right? P possibly that, you know, we, we may see things like the NASDAQ possibly, you know, getting a bit sluggish late in the day tomorrow. Tomorrow, we get some big earnings coming in. We got Microsoft on Tuesday evening, Tesla on Wednesday evening, Apple on Thursday evening. So we've got quite a bit of big earnings in the overnight. Again, it's not going to help. It won't affect us too badly. You know, trading the you know the first two thirds of the session.
election tomorrow. But anyways, I don't think that consumer confidence number uh, is going to be the big factor tomorrow. The big factor tomorrow is going to be what this market does. You know, right now, everything looks very, you know, very bullish and very rosy. But I'll tell you, the last, the last time we saw the S&P make a rebound this big in one day, it then went on one of the biggest bear runs the following three weeks. You're going to go all the way back, I think it was, to 2008, 2009. The last time we saw a rebound like this in one day, it was basically a dead cat bounce, right? It basically bounced and just rolled over and kept going, right, for quite a while. So that's why I said earlier, it's definitely di definitely difficult to trust I think without any major news in the schedule tomorrow, it's all going to be how does this market handle this strong bounce off the low, right? It definitely does smell like the Fed came to the rescue here this afternoon. We'll see how big their guns are uh, tomorrow as well. So no major news tomorrow to worry about. But I'll tell you, though, tomorrow, tomorrow could be the quietest news day of the week because as we go later on, Wednesday is just full of news. Thursday's got news. Friday's got news. So don't go too far this week. We're going to be talking a lot about how this news will play into the markets as we go deeper into the week here. But as far as tomorrow, though, tomorrow looks to be kind of the most open day as far as news goes. Again, though, I think everyone's going to be waiting to see what happens here regarding this bounce off the low. As I mentioned in the introduction, everything is bullish right now. S&P, NASDAQ are very similar in that sense. Oil, as you can see, has broken that pendulum. I'm going to talk about the oil. Let's 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 cover the S&P first. S&P and NASDAQ are going to be very, very similar in certain ways, and they're going to be different in other ways. The most important takeaway right now on the E-mini S&P, let's, you know, let's, Let's forget about the possibility of, the, of, of you know, this all being a, you know, a Fed bailout, basically, right? Let's, let's just focus on what the chart tells us right now. I, I do realize that you know, there's a lot of other stuff that, we could, that could really bleed into this tonight. I could put my tinfoil hat on right now and really go down the rabbit hole there. But I, I always sort of tell my students in the trade room, focus on the chart you're trading right now. If, if we get something different, we can adjust to that as we go. I'm a trader. And right now, the most important information we have is the sheer strength of that last move going higher. Anytime we see a really strong move in one direction, we know we're probably going to get a pullback at some point and everyone's going to want to buy into that pullback. So right now, my job is really just to find levels of support and resistance and wait and see how that pullback looks. Now, as I mentioned before, I, you don't have to get very creative to think this pullback could easily turn into uh, a reversal. So I've got, my, I've got that on my radar as well. We'll talk about kind of how that pullback may turn into a reversal. If we keep going higher here, we do have have a range as you can see overhead so it definitely shouldn't surprise us if this mark continues at least take out those highs and get that big range up there at 44.50 uh, waiting up overhead and so we definitely can see where the market may want to be gravitating towards right up around that range we we pretty much left off uh, last week here if the bears can get control of this the bears have one thing on their mind, really. They want to go back down and bury that low, right? The the I told you so low, right, is what we'll call that uh, for the for you know for for tomorrow. So most important thing is the strength of this move. You know, we 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 again, we're gonna trade what we see right now, not what we think. And then, as you can see, I've also I've also marked up this range. You, if you watch the newsletter a lot, you know you know that anytime we see a really big, you know, big range in one day, this is a ton of range, right? It's a big move down, it's a big move back up. This market basically ran a marathon. You know, I was telling all of our students this morning in the trade room. By the time we finished up the morning session this morning, I was exhausted. There was so much going on. So imagine the markets are, are could be a little bit exhausted. So we might go a bit sideways here in a range, right? Uh, so you know, those are kind of the those those are kind of the you know the the key components. Strong move says expect another leg, right? Strong move says expect another leg. Uh, big wide range, a lot of movement in one day means anticipate a range. Now I got my range right here. It might be up here tomorrow. I don't know, right? Just be aware of that. Okay, so how do we buy it? How do we sell it? How do we how do we how do we make our money on this? Uh, again, trading what we see. You know, I'm not. I don't want to go too far to the rabbit hole as far as we think might happen tomorrow. Most important thing right now: strength to move up. There are four different types of pullbacks. 
right? There are four types of pullbacks that you want to think about on both the S&P and the NASDAQ. I'm going to cover a couple of them here on the S&P, and then we'll jump over to the NASDAQ. I'll cover a couple on the NASDAQ as well, all right? So don't go clicking off the video on me early. I'm going to save the good stuff, okay, for, for the end. Uh, let's talk about shallow pullbacks because – it's a very strong move higher. And sometimes we don't get those deep, deep pullbacks. I would love to get right there. Like that would be my, you know, that might, that might, my, my, that's where I want to get to for the entry tomorrow. But let's face it, you know, there could easily be a smaller channel right there. You know, there, there could be a beautiful trap waiting right below that low here, right? And buyers keep on pushing it higher here. That's, that's, we see these all the time in our trade room. So how do we try to shallow pullback? When it comes to a shallow pullback, what you want to try to do is, is you want to avoid buy, basically buying too high. So as we pull back, I would say, get me just, get me underneath that prior swing. Right. And because we're going to kind of the overnight here, I can't be too aggressive. I got to let I got to let those bears try a couple times. Right. Let them try once. Let them try twice. I'm going to look for what I call a trap setup. Right. A trap setup uh, to buy a shallow, shallow pullback. Now, that's one of the four pullbacks we can look for. Another one would be, let's say we do get down. Right. Let's say we do get what we're looking for here. Now what I want to do is is I want to trap in those bears. I want to let those sellers try to get short off the moving average, right? And once they get short, remember, all of this momentum, right? I know, I know, but it's a big bear trend right now. Isn't isn't this the bubble of all bubble? Or again, remember, don't trade what you think right now. Trade what you see. And what we see right now is, is we see a very strong move in one direction. And so I'll tell you right now, this knowing, uh, being able to remove the emotions from this and remove the news media from this will prove to be beneficial years and years and years in your trading career. I don't care about what the overall narrative of, of, of the markets are right now, right? We have a very strong move. So we see a nice deep pullback. Get those bears to come in. Let some other, let some other rookie or let, let some other gambler out there try to force that low here. The, all those stops now are going to be sitting right there. And we know that whenever we see a real strong move like this, we know the odds are so good. They're going to go back and retest the high. A failure pattern into a pullback combination. Right? We call these kind of, kind, of, kind of failures, right? Below the moving average. We see a lot of these in bull trends. Grab that first pullback. Failure into pullback combination, right? Those are two out of the four, right? Two out of the four uh, pullbacks. I'm going to talk about two more pullbacks, right, on the NASDAQ that you could also apply to the S&P. Now, this is where, this is definitely where you could then look for shorts now, okay? We know right now that the odds are pretty good. We're going to retest that high. So I grab my failure. I grab my pullback. I take a good chunk of profit off at that high. I leave a runner just because you always want to leave a runner if you can, right? The size of, remember the size of that leg, right? That's the first leg. And we, we, we have a little measured move on there, right, on the chart before, right? So we know where that measured move objective will be. Anyways, let's say we get the pullback, right? We get the failure. We retest the high now. Now, job done for the buyers, now, this is where we can start to look for what I call a crown reversal, right? In other words, we don't try to short right away. We wait, we, well, we focus on the buy side, retest the high. Now look for one, look for two, grab that, grab that trap, grab that hidden channel, and that's your short right there. That's a much, that's a much safer short. Right? Much more reliable short, I should say. You know, risk is always, you know, risk is a calculation. This is a percentage. That's a much more reliable trade. Now, one of my favorite things about these types of reversals like this, we call them crown reversals, is you're not, your job's not done yet, right? Because now you got all that open space down here. So mark up that new low, find that high, think about a trap. These are, these are very common, very common trap failure, right? Pull back off the high of that, right? Off, off, off the high of that channel. Okay. So again, we, we grab the pullback, right? We grab the pullback. We retest the high, 
right? That is the buyers going, okay, we, we, we got what we bargained for, right? We expect a retest of that high. Now the buyers come in, they try once, they try twice. We grab that trap. We grab that two try failure pattern. We call them failure patterns, right? In our, in our trade room and the market then takes off the downside. We don't chase it going lower because that's what rookies do, right? We don't let our emotions best of us. We sell it as it pulls back. Now, I say pulls back, right? It pulls back. It's a trap setup. It's a buyer failure setup, right? You've, you've learned these price action setups in our free trading course already. If you haven't, by the way, right, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're one of the few folks that haven't taken that free trading course yet, I'll put a link for you guys right up in the upper right-hand corner. I provide a full roadmap. Uh, I call it my three-step strategy that we follow every day in our trade room, how to find the entries, how to find the levels, how to know which trades to take and which trades to skip. If you're looking for an easy roadmap to follow, if you're sick and tired of, of taking too many losses or missing the best trades every day, that, that free trading course, that quick start course, I'll put a little pop up there for you, right? That'll be a great, that'll be a great place to get, uh, to get your feet underneath you, get a good foundation going uh, on our, off, off the website. And it's free, right? So it's great. So, okay. So that's one way I can, right, I can, I can sell this. Let's talk about another way, and then we'll we'll go to the, we'll go to the, we'll go we'll, we'll talk about some different scenarios here and go to the Nasdaq. Okay, let's say now that we get the pullback. All right, so here's another option: we get the pullback, and now instead of the instead of the bears failing and giving us a, a long trade going higher, now those bears they go aha we got gotcha, you and they run this thing lower. Okay, this could easily happen by the way, right? This this could easily happen. We call these one, two, three reversals, right? just like this one, right? This is a one, two, three reversal, right? And when you see a one, two, three reversal, what, what I always do is, is I always connect trend lines off the highs, bring it down to that low, and what do you do? You buy the first test, right? Well, in, in, that, in that case, you buy the first test, right? So if we, if we get that pullback, and now we don't get that failure. The market takes off the downside. Now what I'll do is I'm, gonna, I'm not going to chase it. We don't want to chase it. We want to sell high. I know it's counterintuitive, but that's the key here. Draw that trend line down. Bring it right up around those highs now, right? And, and, and again, you'll think about it because as we go lower, you'll oftentimes see stuff like that, right? So draw that trend line down. Find that hidden channel up around those highs. Think about where those prior swings are right? Get, get up, right? Get up above the moving average. Again, maybe it's a trap. Maybe it's a buyer failure into a pullback combination, all right? Now, where's my target to be on this, okay? We know where the entry is going to be off top of that channel. Where's my target? Remember, first leg is the measuring leg, okay? So, the size of that leg will be the size of this leg, Okay, that's going to tell you where that precision target is. Definitely try to leave a runner if you can, though. Right now, remember that the measured move here, right? This measured move calculation will give you precision exits. If you have an extra contract, leave the runner. If you don't have an extra contract, though, if it was me, I would just take my money off at that measured move and call it a day. Right? Instead of trying to get rich, trying to let everything run. Right? Take your profit at the right spots. As we say in our trade room, don't be lazy with your winners right? All of us are pretty good at cutting our losses early at this point, right? But a lot of us still struggle with, you know, trying to make every trade a home run. A lot of times, take your profit in the right location, you'll make more money in the long run. You might miss a couple big moves here and there, but it, it's okay. Okay. So that's how we can sell it. A couple ideas on how to sell it. Now, again, I've got a couple more shorts here for you. In fact, I've got one particular reversal that I think is probably the most likely for tomorrow, and we'll talk about that on the NASDAQ. If we do go sideways here, okay, what's the game plan if we go sideways? The game plan if we go sideways is to really focus on these, right, on these support levels. So if we start to go sideways here, ranges act like magnets, and again, ranges are highly anticipated tomorrow because of such a big move day, right? The size, the sheer size of the move says tomorrow might be, a, might be a rest day, right, for these markets. If we start going sideways, okay, what I'll start doing is, is I'll start looking for those, right, those swings. One of my favorite techniques in a range is to look for what we call expanding triangles, right? So drawing trend lines off those lows like that, right? 
and, and getting those support levels below the range. Remember, everybody's waiting for a pullback right now. If we see a range, if we see a range, that range acts like a magnet. So we find levels of support below. We wait for that pullback, and much of before, right, we look for the chance here to trap in those bears now with a failure pattern, okay? Very, very easy idea. The, 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 the tricky part is, is don't let that breakout fool you. The breakout has to hold that pullback and go in order for, in order it for, you know, to be a one, two, three reversal, right? Or a one, two, three breakout, right? So it's gonna jump off that moving average. Now remember, your job is not done at this point. Now we can measure the amount underneath the range, project that amount above the range, and repeat after me trade the turn, trade the turn, right? We can now look for a follow-up entry. And of course, I'm just simply kind of drawing on the screen right now. That'll be, a, that'll be a trap set up. It'll be a failure set up. It'll be a pullback set up. Again, you'll learn, you'll see a lot of examples of those pattern setups, right? Inside that, inside that free trading course uh, that was linked up there in the upper right-hand corner, right? It's a failure pattern off support below the range. And then we go, we trade the turn by finding that new channel. Where's my target? Yeah, other side of the range, right? And that may end up slingshotting, right, and breaking out as we go higher. If it does, we'll, we'll, we'll obviously have more information that tomorrow morning in the trade room. If we keep going higher, right, if we keep going higher, just keep that channel, right? Keep that channel, you know? Keep waiting for those shallow pullback traps, right? Keep waiting for those deep, you know what I mean? If it keeps on going higher, if it keeps grinding higher, you know the game plan. Just keep waiting for it, right? Wait for a deep pullback, failure, pullback combination, right? Wait for a, a shallow pullback, right? And a trap, you know, look for a new range up there, okay? So if it keeps on going higher, you know, it definitely could. There's no reason why I couldn't keep on grinding higher up into this 45, you know, 44 half area, 44, 60 area there. So keep your eyes on the pullback as we go. And again, I'm going to cover a lot more variations of this as we go deeper to the NASDAQ here. Let's do that, right? Let's do that here. So we, we, we've covered a lot of the base on the S&P. I don't want to go, I don't want to go spending all my bullets though on the, on the E-mini. Let's talk about the NASDAQ here. One of our favorite markets. The NASDAQ is very similar uh, to the S&P. Uh, I think the most important parts right now are is the sheer strength of this recent leg higher. The sheer strength of that leg higher is the most important clue right now. Again, don't trade what you think. I get it. I get it. Maybe there's a big channel up here off a daily chart or some, right, something like that. I get it. You know, there probably is some resistance levels up top here. But right now, it's just simply too bullish to sell into it. So I'm looking to buy that, right, to, to, to buy that pullback. At the same time, this just the sheer size of this move today. You know, this, this NASDAQ basically ran a marathon today. And so it might just take the day off tomorrow. Yeah, probably not, right? Probably not. You know, last full week of the month, uh, it looks it looks it looks going to be a pretty busy week this week. But there's certainly the potential that it may go sideways uh, into a trading range. Speaking of ranges, right? Speaking of ranges, uh, the buyers would love to get up into this 14,700 area, right? That big range where we left off from last Friday, and the sellers would love to go back into that range below right? Possibly all the way back around that uh, that low of day. So we definitely have some ranges acting like a magnet. Uh, like you can see here, right? The, the first leg will be the size of that next leg, right? So we're kind of using that first leg and third leg uh, technique that we described in the S&P 500. Uh, you know, same, same thing really goes here uh, on the NASDAQ. We could easily start to grind higher here uh, in the overnight. There's no reason why that couldn't happen. Uh, shallow pullback, I'm looking for a trap set up, right? Deeper pullback here now. I'm looking for a failure into pullback combination, right? If we go back up now to retest that high, okay? Again, that leg, that leg is where they're trying to go in the future, right? But if they don't get that break above those highs, if they hold that high, this is exactly where you start thinking, okay, strong move up there for the buyers. Everybody wants to buy the dip, right? They get in, they retest the high, mission accomplished for the buyers. Now we can start thinking about 
Buyers trying once, buyers trying twice, getting that trap, getting that hidden channel, that nice strong signal off the high, and then again, like I mentioned earlier, finding that new channel and grabbing that first test. Because remember, the first test is always the best test, right? Especially when it comes to new channels. So again, could easily be failure, pull back combo off the low of that channel, or again, in support levels below that trading range, right? Into a crown reversal off the high, which is basically just a retest the high, buyers once, buyers twice, and dump it, okay? Crown reversal, buyers are trapped, being too aggressive at the high, selling right into those stop losses. Market rolls over. We don't chase it. We drill down, right? This is a 6,000 tick chart. We are definitely not trading a 6,000 tick chart tomorrow in the trade room. We'll drill down to our faster time frames and we'll find our bull trap, our buyer failure, right? Our, our pullback combination off the high of that new channel. Right, and so again, that's kind of that's kind of repeating myself there off the S and P. How about how about a couple more pullbacks? I get a few more pullbacks and a, and one really really important reversal. So you'll notice I get a range down here. Right, this range is a really interesting difference. Uh, oftentimes, oftentimes, and you'll see this on the S and P. Oftentimes, that prior we call these the edges. Oftentimes, those edges can really become magnets uh, and become great areas of support. Now, that edge, right, let's just say, for example, right, they go a little bit lower here now. So we don't get the, you know, we don't get the failure off the channel. Now we get underneath this channel. It's a deeper pullback, okay? Now, a deeper pullback, is that a reversal? No, it's not. What does a reversal have to do? Yeah, reversals have to hold the pullback, right? They have to hold it and jump, right? So if they do hold it and jump, absolutely find that new channel, like I mentioned, drill down to your faster time. This is, again, the same thing we talked about in the S&P, right? So again, I'm not going to sell the first pullback because, again, it's such a bold move going higher here. But once I get that one, two, three, and I get it, I get it. You know, I, I hate to miss the reversal too, you know, you're not, you're not the only person that hates to miss the move. Guys, missing the move is part of the game. Uh, not every move is, is, a, is, a, is a highly probable opportunity. We don't chase the moves. We chase high, high percentage opportunities. Unfortunately, that is probably a 35, 40% trade right there, right, over the long run. Again, you know, you, you can talk about the, the situation over, overall right now, but again, it doesn't matter to me, right? All that matters is what's in the chart in front of you. It's so much easier that way, and it will prove to be more effective in the long term. Now, once we see that one, two, three, okay, now we drill down and we find the entry there. Okay, where's our targets going to be? The low is obviously a, a, big, a big objective, but we can really fine tune that target by measuring that leg and then using it to measure that leg, right? That's, that's, the, that's the trick when it comes to reversals, right? We don't predict them too quickly, right? We wait for the proof, but then we get real aggressive, right, once we see proof of that on the first pullback off the high of that channel, right? So nothing's new there, but when we do pull back, right, deep, deep pullback, what's our problem right now? Our problem is, you know, at that point, the bears are going to attack this. If this thing really, if this re this thing really jackknifes off the high and pulls back, you know, the bears are going to jump all over this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to break out the two try rule, let them try a couple times below that moving average. All that bullishness hasn't disappeared yet. Now we know where those stops are. Now we, as I always say in the trade room, think about where the bears are going to be, are going to be in a lot of pain. Think about where the sellers, if you were a seller there, where would you have your exit? Where would you be like, all right, I'm out, I'm, I'm wrong, get me out, right? Where would, you sh where would you cover your short? Right above that high. So bears try once, bears try twice, right? Uh, obviously, we talked about the trap earlier, right? Maybe it's a trap off of that low, even better. Right, I can buy the trap, I can buy the trend line, I can buy into stops. We'll talk more about the smaller details of how to actually trigger the entries inside that inside that free trading class. Again, you're gonna learn a lot more about the specific techniques inside that class. I can't go over all of it here in this video, it's already long enough. Now, once we see that nice strong signal, right, that's when you go long. And then of course, as we go higher, now where's the objective? The objective is to retest the high. Okay, that's where that's where the target's going to be. As we go higher here, one of my favorite add-ons is we call a two-try trap, 
right? Little trap set up right there. Now, a channel is great on that, right? If you can find a way to combine a channel on that, oh my goodness, it's almost bulletproof at that point. You won't always get a channel, though. What you will do, though, is, is get that strong move up. You know, bears will come, come in to sell it again. Once you get the little trap below that low there, bingo. That is a two-try failure. Why two tries? Because it's so because of the pullback, right? It's such a deep, deep pullback, right? If it barely gets underneath the moving average, all you do is just look for stops and buy into stops, right? But if it really pulls back under the moving average, you know, kind of what I always think is if it gets underneath that channel, Right, if it really gets underneath that channel, right, the bears will start to come in and they'll start to sell off that channel, the underbelly of that channel. That's good for us as a, as a buyer, right? We can buy right into those stop losses, right? So two try failure into that, right, into that trap. That is the third pullback we've talked about now. What's the fourth one? The fourth one is the two-legged pullback. Let's say now we bounce off the moving average on the pullback. Okay, we bounce off the moving average on the pullback, draw that trend line down, get up and over and use it. It's one of the simplest uh, types of types of pullback entries. Uh, I, I, I'm almost embarrassed how long it took me to learn it. Uh, it took me it took me a couple of years when I was a, when I was a relatively new trader because you know I kept trying to buy into that trend line, right? And sure enough, you know it, if it, if it holds, it'll it'll just keep on going. So you want to get up over and then grab it, right? We call these two-legged pullbacks. And the giveaway, the giveaway is the, is the pullback itself, right? It's always the giveaway. Do we stair step down, right? Do we see one leg, two leg? That's what we call these two LPs, right? Or two-legged pullbacks, all right? And again, we'll go over more of the rules for this stuff in that, in that video course that I mentioned, right? That's the fourth type of pullback we can look for. And this will work in the S&P. This will work in the NASDAQ. It'll work in any bull market, really. You know, remember the, the the goal is 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 strong move up, right? We're trying to buy into that dip here and take that profit off at that high. Leave a runner to get that measured move. Okay, looking good, looking good. Okay, so now what would the pullback? How does the pullback turn into into a reversal? Okay, this is something I see as being somewhat likely for tomorrow. We've already talked about the one, two, three reversal. That's the easy one. You know, kind of right. Let's talk about, let's talk about, because what might happen here is if, if this really is kind of artificially pumped up, what will likely happen is, is the market will come down and it will start to grind. It'll start to grind, right? Because if this, if this really, if, if, and, and I can, I can definitely see, I, I, you can, you can definitely see the possibility of it, right? The Fed, this, this thing definitely smelt like the Fed came in today, right, and bail, and bailed out these markets, you know, this afternoon. And of course, the rest of it was just a bunch of dip buyers here, right, who got caught in the wrong side early this morning. So, if, 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 if we start to kind of really, you know, again, if we get the one, two jump off the moving average, it's easy, it's obvious. What that may not be that obvious though. We may pull back and start to grind, right? When that happens, now we have to get a little more aggressive. We want to draw that trend line right off those lows, right? What will happen is the market will kind of pull back and it will start to kind of grind. It'll be, almost be lifeless. You know, it's, it's a bit frustrating because you're like, wait a second, what, where am I right now? You know, is it a bear market, a bull market? Whenever I start seeing it grind, and the key is, is it separates off the moving average, that's when you usually have a pretty good idea, this thing's turned. Now, when that happens, you mark up those lows, okay? They're not always easy to find. Sometimes you gotta really be, you gotta really be precise on finding those lows. Find that new high, okay? Bring it right around those big highs up there. And I know that channel doesn't make any sense, but trust me on this, wait for that pullback. And this again is we get that, that trap set up, right? Get those buyers to come in. They try, right? They try and we fail for a failure into a pullback, right? Yes. And then where's my, where's my target? In this particular example, the target's going to be this big leg, right? So it's, it's, it's just one big measured move. Again, that'll give you some more precision. If you got an extra bullet left, right? Obviously that low a day is an easy one there as well. Okay, so that's going to be kind of that slow grind, right? That slow grind down. The key is it separates off the moving average, right? And starts to grind, grind down, okay? Again, kind of like this, right? See, this one's going to separate, kind of grinds higher like that. You know, that's why I said on, on the S&P, don't be surprised 
if you see a really shallow pullback right now. You know what I mean? Don't be surprised if buyers come right in on it because, again, those grinds, they just, they're, they're big clues. They're big clues. Okay, a lot like the S&P, if we keep going higher, just keep waiting for that pullback strategy I mentioned earlier. If we go sideways, right, wait for that pullback. Again, find those support levels, those trend lines underneath, right? We'll do it tomorrow, obviously. Trapping those bears with that failure setup and then, right, trade the turn. Trade the turn, trade the turn. Same thing in the NASDAQ as for the S&P. Trapping those bears underneath the range with a failure, with a, you know, and again, first test of that new channel, and then you know where that final target is, right off the off the pendulum swing on the opposite side. All right, guys, I know I'm covering a lot right now. If you have any questions on this, you know, you can always drop those questions in in the comment section below. And again, you're going to learn a lot more of the, you'll see the roadmap that we use for this, a lot of the rules we use, right, inside that, that, that trading course, right? It's free on the website. That way, everybody can kind of trade along with us here on this, on this nightly newsletter. All right, we're looking pretty good here. Next up here, how about some oil? How about some oil? So oil is the one that, Oil is the one that has, well, it's obviously not as bullish. You can, you, you don't need me to tell you that, right? The, the, the oil is obviously uh, not as bullish right now. What are the keys? What are, what are the most important things right now on the oil? Uh, there's a very, very big move down right? And that big move down, you'll notice what happened, right? They came back, they retested their low, and they now reverse, right? It's a very good example of how when you see a really strong move in one direction, don't try to pick a bottom on it, sell the bounce, right? But then once it retests that low, then you can start looking for that long, right? Going high. That's a very good example there. So there, there isn't any unfinished business right now for the sellers, right like like on the like like in the nasdaq right there is unfinished business right now for the buyers right now in the nasdaq right unfinished business big strong move there's none of that right now in the oil okay there's no unfinished business for the bears they already got what they came for big strong move down they retested that low and then ripped back higher second big component here is going to be the range right the range of course is a big factor ranges act like magnets now, as we always say, the amount we go below the range is usually equal to the amount we go above the range. And you can see, for the most part, they respected it, but not anymore. And so usually when we see a broken pendulum, you know, broken pendulum usually means a broken range. Okay, that also tells me, or also you can see, we have a rising support trend line here. It's not going to be easy for the bears, right? If, if, if my plan is to sell a trap above this high, Wow, what's my strategy for working around that trend line? You know, that's a big problem right now for the bears. It is not, it's not the end all be all. I definitely can see a couple of ways to trade around that. Okay, think about that two legged pullback we just talked about. That's definitely something to think about for the short side. But at the same time, though, look at the strength of this move. That's a pretty strong pop. That's a pretty strong pop. And I can easily see this thing maybe potentially grinding and running higher as we see possibly a bit of a, a bit of a short squeeze, especially with this Omicron thing starting to nosedive, right? Just as fast as it showed up. So lot lot to you know lot to think about. I think the most important thing right now is the buyers have the momentum. The sellers don't really have anything left to accomplish. I, I understand that could change really quickly here, right? But right now, again, trading what we see the sellers don't have much to stand on right now. They get a rising support trend on their way. The bulls have this nice strong pop. And, you know, it isn't as strong as the S&P and the, and the NASDAQ, but it, you'd think, though, that the buyers will be trying to come in and buy that next dip. So, of course, I've got my trend lines marked the highs. I find that low. You could easily think of this as like a big one try, big two try. You could easily think like that right now. So definitely have that on my radar for tomorrow. And of course, that big first leg up, right, will kind of be that next leg, right, anticipating it where that measured move would be up overhead. Now, the easiest thing for the buyers right now would be if the market keeps on running higher. You know, that would be the easiest thing because the buyers would love to get back to that range up around 85, 85 half, 86. The sellers, they want to get back down to retest that low and they'll have to get through that trend line to do it. So not going to be easy, but definitely not, definitely not impossible here uh, for those for those sellers. Um, as we pull back, right? As we pull back, this is a really, really, really simple plan here. As we pull back right now to be a buyer on this, it's a very simple failure, 
into pullback combination, right? As we pull back, it's that failure into pullback combination, okay? Get that trend line rising up, trapping those bears below the moving average, failure pullback combo. We know where the next objective is from there. Now, if I want to be a seller on this right now, to be a seller on this, you can try to you you can you can try to thread the needle on this if you want. It's not really my style, right? You can try to go like this, one, two, grab that trap, and you can really kind of play hardball, right? Trying to get that trap. That'd be the best way to short this right now, right? I think the easier money will be to wait for it to push below that low. And then what will oftentimes happens is, is you'll be, you'll go back above that high. Again, trend line, right? There's that, there's that support trend line right there. Get those, right? Get those, get those buyers trying to buy this thing back up, right? And, and basically sell with that, with that failure setup going back lower again. This will be your pendulum swing, pendulum swing back down again. Right, so we got to get. We either have to get for a short right now, either get a trap on this, which I think again is going to be a bit of a gamble with that rising support trend line. Combine that with they already got their objective. You know, all the reasons we talked about earlier. If they can get underneath this thing now, that's where I think a lot of this becomes easier. We pop back up. We got levels of resistance now overhead. It's a little bit tough just to sell off of it, considering the situation. I'll look for the buyers to commit on the right on on that first pullback. If they fail, we can look for that failure into pullback combo. Target a course back at that low, and if you have a runner, leave that runner for the pendulum swing, right? So a failure into pullback combo off that trend line uh, as as well. That's kind of the only way we can really sell this market right now, as opposed to we may end up back into the range for a bit. In that case, you got resistance line here, right? You've got resistance line here. Want to see it pop up, right? The range is the magnet, of course. We see it pop up. Buyers come in, try to buy the pullback. We keep hitting those failures. If it goes back into that range, it basically it basically negates the buyers at that point. Okay, so a little bit a little bit fuzzy as far as kind of where we're going to get the best entry on the short side here. If the market def if the market pushes higher. That becomes a lot easier, right? If we run higher, now, of course, we find our new channel off those highs, right? Now we look for that pullback. Again, shallow pullback trap, right? Modest pullback. Failure into pullback combination, right? Really, really deep, deep pullback. What do you do in that sense? Remember, trend lines right there. What do you do? You trap them in. Bears once, bears twice. This is that deep pullback we talked about off the, off the NASDAQ. Right, it's that two try failure, and then grab that trap before we retest those highs. Right, makes sense. So as it goes higher, we're still waiting for that first pullback. Same thing we talked before, right? If the market was to grind higher, grind higher, grind higher, that's your cue to get more aggressive. Draw it tight off that off that high, tight off that low. Think about where you can find that trap. Trap into. Seller failure, failure into pullback combo. You get it, right? You get it. Hopefully you do at this point, right? Same thing over and over again as we go, all right? So if we do end up rolling higher, now again, right? Is it possible this might, right? Possible this might do something like this where we see that big, right? That grind higher. We do our job. We grab our trap, our failure, our pullback combo. They retest that high and then what? Yes, crown reversal. One, two, dump it back down, right? Find that new channel. Could that, you know, could that be at 10.30 tomorrow, right? Could that reversal into that first pullback, could that be coming 10.45, 11 o'clock tomorrow? You know, definitely something to keep in mind. Now, obviously, tomorrow we'll, you know, we'll up to the charts we see as we see fit, but this, as you can see, there's, there's no shortage of opportunities right now. I think probably the hardest thing right now is the short side. Uh, you know, a, 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 absolutely. We either have to wait for it to run top and then back down. We've got to get underneath this thing, back up, and then grab those probably be buyer failures, right, off of, off of that underbelly, you know, of that, uh, you know, of, of, that, of, of, that, of that trend line there. 
All right, guys, I did my best to kind of outline what I'm looking for here tomorrow. Don't forget, I provide a lot more kind of real examples of how we apply this stuff, right, to our different markets as part of that free trading course. So make sure you grab that. I hope by now you subscribe to the YouTube channel. As you can see, I am bringing the fire here on this video every evening. And don't forget, if you guys have any questions, drop those questions in the comment section right or just call me i'll be here i'll be here to answer the call right call the office drop me a comment in the comment section I'm more than happy to talk and answer any questions you might have uh whatever the easiest way is for you uh tomorrow morning eight o'clock eastern time in our trade room be there be there or be square uh we get a big day for tomorrow maybe some ranges Maybe some continuations, maybe a reversal. We're, 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 we're definitely ready for it. In the meantime, get some rest. Get some rest. Boy, what a, what, a, what a busy weekend, right? Tons of great sports on television. And, of course, the market's just, just insane busy here today, though. So get a good night's sleep tonight. We'll see you tomorrow morning at the opening bell in the trade room. All the information on the website if you want to get registered and see you tomorrow. If not, come back and see me tomorrow night. We'll, we'll, we'll do it all again. Get ready for Wednesday's trading session. My name is Joseph. Thanks for tuning in. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.